Think I'd make that one, did you, Sam? No. Think I'll be the club's billiard champion this year? If you play this way, Roger. But will I? That's the question. Here. See if you can make the same shot. How silly can you get? Well, I'll try. Didn't look easy, and it wasn't. If you want to see a hard one, watch this. You're trying to make me feel worse than I do already. What I'm trying to do is make myself feel better. Watch. That's what reverse English does for you. Here now, you try it. See if you can. No, I've had enough, Roger. Hey, hey, Sam. Nice boys don't throw cue sticks on the floor. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, but it's no use, Roger. What's no use? I can't stop thinking. I, I can't stop wondering who I was and what I did before I came to town. Look, Sam, you've been talking about that now for ten years. Will you cut it out before you give everybody the creeps and drive yourself crazy? I can't. Lately, it's been getting worse. Listen, I'm Sam Fisher now, but I wasn't before I lost my memory. Roger, don't you understand why I'm so jumpy? I came to this city a little over ten years ago with no memory of who I was or where I'd been or what I'd done. I had an accident, and I woke up in Kansas City, and I didn't know my name. No one did or where I'd come from. They just found me in the street, unconscious. So what, Sam? Everybody knows who you are now. You're a happily married man, an important business executive. One of the city's best-dressed men. But I've got to know who I was. I've got to. I'm sorry, Roger. I've, I've got to get out of here. This this place is getting on my nerves. I'm, I'm going to get some air. Don't go too far away, Sam. <laughs> Hello? Mrs. Fisher, please. Speaking? Oh, Rita... I didn't recognize your voice. This is Roger. Oh. I'm in the billiard room at the club. Your husband just walked out on me. Oh, it's poor darling Sam. Upset again. Upset? That obsession of his is driving him out of his mind. Oh, the poor dear. Yeah. Isn't it a shame? <laughs> <laughs> shame it's taken him this long to begin to crack. Uh, pretty soon, Rita, we can do exactly what we planned. <laughs> And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Now, let me get this straight, Mr. Fisher. You don't think you're really Sam Fisher? No, Blackie. How can I be? Just the name I gave myself when I came to after an accident in Kansas City ten years ago. I see. Well, why did you pick that particular name? It, it might have some bearing on your past. No, I'm, I'm afraid it doesn't. You see, I called myself Sam Fisher because my doctor's name was Sam, and he was an excellent fisherman. Well, that takes care of that. Tell me this. How much effort have you made to find out who you were before you became Sam Fisher? None. I was afraid to. Afraid to? Why? Well, somewhere in the back of my mind, I had a vague memory that I'd done something wrong. Mm -hmm. But it was just a glimmer of a memory, so faint it never took shape, never, never gave me an inkling of my past. But it's always with me, always haunting me, poking at my conscience... Blackie, I, I just can't stand it much longer. So you want to find out who you were, where you've been, and what you did before you became Sam Fisher? Yes, I've got to. I've got to know no matter how terrible the truth is. Mr. Fisher, why are you so convinced that you did something wrong before you had that accident? Why do you think that? I just think it, that's all. I can't help it. It's there in my mind. Blackie, you've helped others. I know you can help me. I'll give you all the assistance I can. But how can you help me when your memory stops with that accident ten years ago? tell you something I've told only to Mrs. Fisher and a few of my closest friends. It's about a dream I have. A fantastic dream that I have almost every night. I can't. Excuse me. Hello. I'd like to speak to Mr. Fisher, please. I understand he's there. This is Mrs. Fisher. Oh, just a minute. Uh, this is your wife, Mr. Fisher. Oh, thank you. 
Yes, Rita? Oh, Sam, I hope I've called you in time. The maid said you left for Boston Blackie's an hour ago. How much have you told him? Well, not very much of anything, dear. You sound awfully upset. What's the matter? Well, Roger just phoned. He found out something about you. Before the accident? Yes, Sam, and it's awful. Don't tell anybody anything, not until you've seen Roger. He's found out something about me. Yes. What? What did he find out? I don't want to talk about it over the phone. Roger will tell you. He's waiting for you at the club. Now get down there right away. All right, dear, I will. Right away. Well, that sounded important and encouraging. Blackie, I'm sorry, but I'll have to leave. Leave? But you were just about to tell I'm me about... I'm sorry, Blackie, but I can't tell you anything now. Wait a minute, Fisher. Do you... I don't think I'll, I'll need your help. I, I don't think anybody can help me now. So I was right about myself, Roger. I was a murderer before I lost my memory. Well, it isn't positive, Sam. There's only an indication that you were. I'm, I'm checking it further. Now you get in a cab and go home to Rita. How can I? A murderer. Well, no, I don't know for sure yet, Sam. Don't you understand? When will you know? It'll take a little while. I want to check slowly and carefully. Here, there's a cab waiting at the stand. Taxi! Hey, Roger, let me help you check up on this thing. No, no, Sam, you stay out of it. If not for your own sake, for Rita's. Well, you, you let me know your progress, won't you? If I make any, man, I'll get in the cab. Go on home and don't worry. Don't worry. I won't sleep till you find out the truth, Roger. Find it out soon, will you? As soon as I can. Night, Sam. Night, Roger. Thank you for everything. Bye, Sam. <laughs> You're a nice guy, Sam. You'll live a long and happy life, I imagine. You'll never be seen again. But, Mrs. Fisher, the Missing Persons Bureau can't go out looking for every man and woman who stays away from home overnight. But you don't seem to understand, Lieutenant Martin. My husband's never done this before. And he was terribly upset last night when he got into that cab. I know something's happened to him. Why are you so sure? Because it's something he was afraid of. He thinks he has amnesia. That he's not really Sam Fisher at all, but someone else. A killer, maybe. Are you talking about the same Sam Fisher I'm thinking about, Miss Fisher? He's the Sam Fisher who was voted one of the city's best-dressed men this year. Well, we're talking about the same man. Oh, then, I don't have to describe him for you, do I? Oh, no, I know what he looks like. Well, he won't be hard to find, Miss Fisher, if he's really missing, which I doubt. Oh, but I think he is. I know he is. He's probably run away or suddenly become the person he was before he lost his memory. Hmm. Oh, that might be. You say he was last seen getting into a cab in front of his club? Yes. By Roger Ainsley, a friend of his. Uh-huh. Had, uh, had your husband done anything out of the ordinary yesterday? Well, no. No, but he was especially upset about himself, though, when he went to Boston Blackie for help in finding out about his past. Went to see Boston Blackie, huh? Yes. Did he see Blackie? Yes, I phoned him, and he was talking to Blackie then. All right. I think I'll call Inspector Faraday. He might be interested in this. Oh. Why, Lieutenant? Do you think Blackie might have something to do with my husband's disappearance? Well, I don't know, Miss Fisher. I'm just checking that angle as a possibility. Oh, I see. Faraday speaking. Hello, Inspector. This is Lieutenant Martin over in Missing Person. Oh, hello, Martin. <laughs> Found anything lately? <laughs> <laughs> no, we just lost one. Yeah? Sam Fisher, last seen getting into a taxi outside the Arnicle Club. Arnicle Club, huh? Yes, I know that doesn't interest you, Faraday, but this might. Fisher was up to see your friend Blackie the evening he disappeared. Up to see Blackie, huh? Well, this is more interesting to me than you think. It ties in with a case the homicide department just started work on. I can follow your missing Mr. Fisher's tracks step by step, Martin. You can? Sure. He left Blackie, went to his club... Took a taxi from his club to the waterfront and then disappeared. How do you know he went to the waterfront? Because we just found the cab he took. The cabbie's report shows his last stop was the Arnold Club. The cabbie described Fisher as his passenger? The cabbie wasn't in condition to describe anything. He was dead. Strangled with a necktie. And I think I can tie Boston Blackie into this, too. <laughs> All right, you guys, finish with those pictures and let's get that body out of here. Maybe you guys like the salt air of the waterfront, but I get seasick on a park lake. 
Now make it snappy. Hello there, Inspector Faraday. Uh, hello, Lieutenant Martin. Fine, Blackie. Yeah, here he is. Yes, here I am, Faraday. Here you are. And here's a dead body, and here's where I solve another case for you. Ho oh, hum. I'll ho hum you. I know who killed this guy, Blackie. It was Sam Fisher. The lovely red and green tie around the cabbie's neck came from around Fisher's neck. Only it fits the cabbie's neck a little too tightly, huh? Yeah. And you know why Fisher killed this cab driver and where Fisher is now. Well, do you or don't you? Don't I, Faraday? Uh, Say, uh, by the way, Faraday, keep away from the waterfront or you'll wind up mounted on some fisherman's living room wall. And don't try to get me connected with this. All I know is Fisher came to me for help last evening. He thought he was suffering from amnesia, and he wanted me to find out who he was before his mind went blank. And what else? There's no more else, Faraday. He got a phone call from his wife and then beat it out of my apartment. I haven't done anything on the case because I was out with Mary last night. Good. Now you can go out with her again right now. I just wanted to hear your story. I know what happened here. Fisher has run away. He killed this cabbie so he couldn't tell which, which way he went. Well, that's a nice theory. For you, Inspector, it shows remarkable logic. But as usual, it's wrong. Because you say so? No, because the green and red necktie says so. It was found twisted around the cab driver's neck, right? So? So somebody twisted it around his neck. Chances are somebody was wearing the necktie, took it off, and strangled the driver. That's right. Somebody named Sam Fisher. Who, if memory serves me, was one of the city's best-dressed men. What's that got to do with him not killing this guy here? Fisher wouldn't wear a tie like that green and red thing Faraday. It's monstrous. He wouldn't be found dead wearing it, much less use it on somebody else who's found dead. Some... That's what I like about you, Blackie. You keep saying that you're always helping me, and the first thing you do always is complicate things. If Fisher didn't kill the cab driver, who killed him? I don't know, Faraday, but as long as I told you who didn't, I might just as well try to find out who did. <laughs> And now, back to Boston Blackie. Wealthy and prominent Sam Fisher recovered from an accident ten years ago, but suffered loss of memory. When his friend Roger Ainsley tells Fisher that he has made a mild discovery about the years before the loss of memory, Fisher gets into a cab and is not seen again. But the cab is found, and so is the driver, dead strangled with a necktie. As we return to our story, Boston Blackie talks to the missing man's friend, Roger Ainsley. Mrs. Fisher tells me you're one of her husband's closest friends, Mr. Ainsley. And his greatest admirer, Blackie. Oh, why shouldn't I be? I had a little two-by-four business eight years ago, and look at my office today. Thanks to the contacts I made through Sam Fisher. Apparently, you're indebted to him, yes. Perhaps you can help us find him. Well, I don't know how... He's still missing, and the cab driver who took him to the waterfront is dead. You put Fisher into that cab, didn't you? Yes. Did you get a good look at the driver? No, I didn't. Like, it was dark, and besides, all cab drivers look alike to me. Do the police really think Sam killed that cabbie? They think so, but I don't. That wasn't Fisher's necktie found around the cab driver's neck. It wasn't his type of tie, and it wasn't expensive enough for him. Well, I will say Sam had expensive taste in clothes. And good, too. Do you remember what Fisher was wearing when he got into that cab? Yes, I do. A blue double-breasted pinstripe suit. It was his newest. Yes. Yes, that's right. He wore it up to my place. And that's further proof Fisher didn't kill that driver. He never... Well, never in the world would he wear a green and red tie with blue. And he wasn't wearing it when I saw him. Well, so much for Sam Fisher's present. What can you tell me about his past? Nothing. I've known him only since he came to town. That was about ten years ago. He never told me anything about his past because he didn't know anything about it himself. You believe he actually suffered from amnesia? I don't know. He told a convincing story, and he told it often. It's possible he did have amnesia. I'm sure of that. Well, that and the fact that he didn't kill that cabbie are the only things I'm sure of about this case. Thanks for your time, Ainsley. Don't mention it. Well, I will mention this. You may hear from me again. Well, you know where to reach me any time you want. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Sailor. Sailor? Hey, what's the matter with you land rubbers? Can't you steer a straight course? Oh, sorry, maybe I thought I was plowing through mine water. Yeah. Hello, Ainsley. Captain Dunn, what are you doing here? You don't know, Mr. Ainsley? <laughs> well, you got a surprise coming. Look, you're a fool to come here. Boston Blackie was just here. If he saw you, he might start putting things together. 
You said you'd stay on your ship until it pulled out. If everything went according to plan, Mr. Ringsley. Well, didn't it? You got your $5,000 to take Sam to China with you, didn't you? I did. <laughs> well, then what's wrong? I kept my part of the bargain, and I left Sam lying on the wharf for you, just as I said I would. You did. Then what are you doing here, you fool? You realize somebody might get the connection between us and... And look, Sam was still there when you came ashore to get him, wasn't he? He didn't come to and walk away, did he? No, he didn't walk away. <laughs> he couldn't. And then he didn't come to. He couldn't do that either. Now, what did you hit him with? The broadside of a four-masted schooner? Well, no, why? What do you mean? I mean, whatever you used, you hit him too hard. What? When I found him on the wharf, he was dead. Dead? No. Dead, I. Dead as the wind in the Sargossa Sea, but I got rid of the body. Oh, that, this wasn't in the plans. And it wasn't in my plans to have to get rid of a body either. So I've changed my price. <laughs> The $5,000 you give me is just a down payment for my services now. You better come aboard with 5000 more. But I, I don't have it. You don't have it, eh? <laughs> you better get it, landlubber. <laughs> you better get it. Rita... Honey, Sam's dead, and you're going to come into a fortune from his insurance alone. But I'm going to be careful how I spend it, Roger, darling. All right, pinch every penny of it until it squeals if you want it, but you've got to give me that $5,000 for Captain Dunn. You kill Sam, you pay Captain Dunn. I don't have it. Besides, I, I didn't mean to kill Sam. It was an accident. I hit him too hard. You certainly did. Look, Rita, <laughs> what's the matter with you? Why don't you stop? Are you trying to get rid of me, too? No, I'm not. I'm trying not to get rid of $5,000. Yeah. You were willing to do anything to get rid of Sam. You thought it was wonderful when I came up with the idea of telling Sam I knew something about his past. And then to see that he got lost for good, so it looked like he ran away. It was a brilliant plan, Roger. Brilliant. It was perfect. You were even going to write to him after Captain Dunn Shanghai him to China. You were going to tell him that we were sure he was a murderer, so we knew he'd stay away. And I was, but I'm not going to have to write to him now. You killed him. He's not in the mood for letters. Look, will you give me that $5,000 for Captain Dunn? That's all I ask. You killed my husband. That's something I didn't ask. All right, maybe I did kill him. I said, maybe I did. I don't know. All I know is that I got to the waterfront before him and his cab, and I did slug him. But I also know I didn't kill that cab driver. And I think you did. I did? Yeah. Why, Roger, yes, I don't know... you. That's it. You killed that driver. Only you and the cab driver knew my plans. <sighs> After all, he was well paid to take the long way around to the waterfront so I could get there first. But you were the only one who knew where that cri cab driver would be and when. Well, what if I did? I had no reason to kill him. Oh, no? No. You killed him so he wouldn't tell that I paid him to drive Sam to the wharf. You killed him so that there'd be a murder involved in our scheme and I'd have to keep my mouth shut forever about it. You get out of here, Not Roger. Not yet, I won't. You knew when that driver would drop your husband off at the wharf. You waited up the road until the cab passed, and then you hailed it. The driver and his cab were found just a little ways up the road from the wharf where Captain Dunn found Sam. You have a beautiful imagination, darling. <laughs> Too bad it imagines all the wrong things. Oh, yeah. All right, go ahead. Deny it if you want to. But that won't stop me from getting your money to keep the words out of Captain Dunn's mouth. And us out of a jam. Listen, Blackie. Are you trying to make a beachcomber out of me? We boarded two ships in this dock. And, and there are only three, Faraday. So come on, let's get aboard this one and find out what we're looking for. Or go home. I don't know why we're looking for anything down here. Do I have to tell you all over again? We're looking for the ship's captain that came to see Roger Ainsley this afternoon. Yes. So there's bound to be a connection between the sea captain and Ainsley. Because you think there's a connection between Ainsley and the disappearance of Sam Fisher. And the dead cab driver, too. Let's not forget him. Let's forget to go aboard this ship. And let's remember to go back uptown. Too late, Inspector. We talked our way right up the gangplank, and here there's we There's nobody are. on deck. Let's go. Oh, but there's bound to be someone aboard. Hello? Hello, anybody home? Hey, who's there? That's 
the man, Faraday. That's the man who saw Ainsley this afternoon. Yeah. Ahoy down there! Who's calling? I am, Captain. I want to talk to you. Aye? Well, come up to my quarters. I'm pressing to go ashore. Thanks. Come on, Faraday. These steps here. Blackie, if this is a wild goose chase... Oh, come I'll... on now, Faraday. One aboard a ship be nautical. If anything, we're on a wild gold chase. Throw that joke overboard, will you? And don't let go. Oh, Faraday. Don't man want to see me? Uh, well, it's always proper to pay a visit to the captain of the ship when you invite yourself aboard, isn't it? Uh, you are the captain. Aye. Come in. Hmm. Seems to me I've seen you before. You have. You bumped into me just outside Roger Ainsley's office door this afternoon. Oh, so I did. You still steer a zigzag course? No. From now on, I hope to go straight to port. Uh, this is Inspector Faraday of the Homicide Squad. Uh, how are you, matey? I'm Boston Blackie. I don't think you told us your name. Dunn. Harvey Dunn. What do you want aboard my ship? We'd like to know why you went to sea, Ainsley, this afternoon. Personal business. I suppose you want to know why I'm wearing civilian clothes to go ashore tonight. <laughs> That's personal business, too. Anything else? No. But I wonder if you know a man was killed and another man disappeared in the vicinity of this wharf last night. Yes, I know. Heard it on the radio. Hmm. Yeah, nice new tie you have there, Captain. You got something on your mind, Blackie? Now, that tie, Captain Dunn. The rest of your shore clothes are rather old. But the tie is new, brand new. You didn't leave your old one somewhere, did you? No. I threw it away. You threw it away? It flew down the road and wrapped itself around a cab driver's neck and choked him to death. Hey, Blackie. That red and green striped tie would be okay with the captain's suit, wouldn't it? Yes, Faraday, but it isn't okay with the captain that we've caught him with his... Mike! Tie. Henry, come here! Mike, Henry! Here, Captain. Uh-oh, Faraday, these guys are big. Mike! Henry, get to work on me! I can't get out of here. You're in this too, Captain. Scram, Faraday, and get to a pole. I can't. I'm too busy. Oh, yeah. won't be for long. All right, Barney. A little bruised, but still here. How about you? Present. And Dan and his slugging chums are all accounted for. Yeah. Uh, it was that table leg that accounted for little Mike there. It's a handy little gadget, table leg. I got Henry, boy, with an arm. My arm with a fist on the end of it. And look at our friend, the captain. He looks all at sea. <laughs> Why don't you stop that? All right, Mr. Fisher, Mr. Ainsley. Mm. I'll see you in my office now. Oh, of course. All right. Thank you, Inspector Faraday. Oh, stop whistling that turkey in the straw. Oh, of course. Come on, come on. Oh. Well, what's the verdict, Inspector Faraday? I didn't kill anyone. Don't you let Roger say I did. He's lying. I am lying not lying. To save You're the one That's enough of that, really both of you. Well, Blanky, shall I tell him the bad news? Or would you like to? Well, I'll tell him this much, Faraday. Ainsley, Mrs. Fisher, we got a confession from Captain Dunn a moment ago. He killed both the cab driver and your husband, Mrs. Fisher. Mm. And you know I didn't do it. And I didn't. Uh, no, Ainsley. Fisher was very much alive when the captain found him on the wharf. Unconscious, but alive. You didn't hit him too hard. That's right. Now, here's what happened. Captain Dunn killed the cab driver first. He waited up the road near the wharf and hailed the cab. After it had been down to the dock to drop Fisher... The driver had brought Fisher to the wharf so that uh, you could get a slug out of Ainsley. Captain Dunn killed the cab driver to cover up the murder he was about to commit. A dead cab driver can't talk about his last passenger. But, um, why did Captain Dunn kill my husband? He thought he could get more money from Ainsley if Ainsley here thought that Sam had died from that blow on the head. Oh. It was a blow from the captain that killed him, though. So you two ought to be happy. You're not going to jail for murder. I know well, I'm that's happy. Something. Uh, don't let that become a habit. Neither you nor Mrs. Ainsley is in the clear. But why? Well, we didn't do anything. Well, of course not. All we did was... All you did was conspire to defraud and injure the person of Sam Fisher. There's a charge being placed against you for that. Charge? Why don't you whistle, Ainsley? Or is the turkey in the straw unhappy because he's going to be a jailbird? <laughs> 